It's almost been three weeks since I posted my last penny hunt. We found some old pennies in that video, and I'm hoping to find some more, because I have some slots in this Dance Cool Lincoln Penny album that need to be filled. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure, and welcome back to the channel. The last week or so, I've had some really good hunts in half dollars, and in quarters, and in nickels, and so I've got a couple of recent boxes right here for pennies, and I'm hoping to get some of the same luck. As you know, we've slotted 210 of the 234 cents that this Dansko Lincoln Penny album holds. We have 24 open slots, and that's through 324 boxes. And this will be Penny Hunt and Fill episode 171. And we're up to boxes 325 and 326 already. Plus, if we get any Canadian small cents, we'd like to add some more to those albums, although... These are DFW boxes, and I don't get a lot of Canadian small cents in my hunts out here. That being said, we've got a hunt to do. I'll give you guys a look at the books when I compare all of today's finds to them. But let's get on with the hunt right now and see if I got some lucky penny boxes. Because I've had some good luck, like I said, in the other denominations. Not dimes, though. All right, let's take a quick peek here. Um, we got a few copper enders. Doesn't necessarily look great, but it doesn't look that bad. A lot of the rolls look like they might have a cent or two missing and or have some that have some higher stacks like they have a cent added. That'll be interesting. I'll have to see if we have any overages or underages as I hunt. Speaking of hunting, let's get after it. I'll bring you guys in when I have my first find of the first box of this hunt. It's always a good sign when you're on the very first roll. You've got a lot of copper so far. You see a wheat scent, you flatten it out, and you see a second one. We're going to have two wheat scents in the first roll of the box. The first one's a 1954 Philadelphia, and the reverse face of one in the back is going to be a 1953 Denver. Two wheat scents, roll one, good start. Roll number four is going to give us an early wheat scent. Right here, obverse face, and take a look at the date on this bad boy. 1930, and I believe that's in Denver. Let me just double check. Yeah, 1930 Denver, and it has that look to it like it's been in an envelope or in a book. It has kind of a matte finish to it like it hasn't been exposed to the air as much. So it could be a good sign. And earlier in the roll, I had a 1960D with that same look as well as a 1971, not the DDO with the same look. So looks like possibly somebody had some of these older coins in an envelope and dumped them. We'll have to see. Don't want to get ahead of myself, but that's a nice find. First from the 30s, and uh, I don't see very many from the 30s. Three weed cents, three and a half rolls in, almost four rolls. Roll number five, weed cent number four. I think that's a 1956 Denver, and we'll take it. Roll number 14. Weed scent number five is reverse facing. And that's a 57 Denver. Oh, and it looks like there's a couple of uh, really nice 2009 cents. I usually don't keep them, but I have these two nice ones here. And I thought I saw an ender that looks nice here. So I'll be interested to see if we got a whole bunch of nicer 09 P and D. Lincoln cents in here, and if I do, I'm going to pull them out just for funsies. Roll number 17, weed scent number 6, obverse face in a 1944 Philly. And believe it or not, that's our first weed scent from the 40s. Roll 18, we have 7 weed scents now. This one is another 1956 Denver. Roll number 21 towards the back of the roll is weed scent number 8. This one's going to be a 1954 Denver this time. Roll number 28 of the hunt. Wheat scent number nine, almost to double digits. And that's another oldie with a mint mark. 1935 Denver. That is a lower mintage. Not anywhere near that low, but it is low. And that's a second 30s with a mint mark. Both Denvers, but a 30D and a 35D. Nine wheat cents on the board. Roll number 29, and we've made it to 10 wheat cents, the 10th being a 1953 Philadelphia. Roll number 30, wheat cent number 11. 
And that's a 1947 Denver. Roll number 38, weight set number 12. Another 1944 Philadelphia. Roll number 46 is gonna give us a couple of finds here. First and foremost, the front wheat scent for wheat scent 13 is another 1956 Denver. I see the reverse of another wheat scent back here. This will be number 14 for the hunt. Could be old. And it is. Is that 1911? It is 1911. Don't see a mid mark, but it's kind of slick there, so I just want to take a peek. Yeah, 1911 Philadelphia. I have not found a wheat scent that old in a while. That's about as low as you can expect to find them in circulation. All right, weed scent number 14 is an oldie from the teens. And while I have you here, we'll grab the 1959 Denver and add it to the board as well. Roll number 47, weed scent number 15. Another one from the 30s, no mint mark this time, a 35 Philadelphia. Well, that's going to do for that first box of this two box hunt, and it was a dandy. 15 wheat cents. Four of them being pre-1940, including a 35D, a 35, a 30D, and a 1911. We also got one Canadian cent. We got a total of nine 1959s. Don't see that many in my local boxes ever, but we did today. We actually had six bright and shinies, and there's a lot more than this, but I had to be picky. I'll tell you, this 1974S is not the greatest condition, but I don't see 74S's with red on them very often in my area, mainly 74D. So we'll cover those at the end. 469S's, and that's odd for me too in my box, which just tells me there's a nice copper dump because speaking of copper, three pounds, 12 ounces, so three and three quarters pounds in the first box. Even if we have a light second box, we're probably gonna have almost six pounds now. Can't get mad at that. All right. 15 leases on the board, a bunch of 09s from the first box. Let's see how we do in box number two of the hunt. Hopefully it's another dandy picked up from the uh, same week, different bank. So let's see how we do in this one. All right, here we go. If I can get it open. It's always tough. That last little bit of glue just hangs on. Definitely looks like another copper box, doesn't it? Could be another good box. Nothing saying wheat scent on the top, but definitely seeing copper. You guys know the drill. We'll continue with the hunt. I'll bring it back in when I have my first find. Roll number three of box number two is gonna give us our first wheat scent. Obverse facing, just another 1956 Denver. We'll take it, that makes 16 wheat scents now for the hunt through the first 53 rolls. Roll five of box two, wheat scent number two for the box. 17 now for the hunt, this time a 58 Denver. Roll 64 of the hunt. Wheat scent number 18. And that's going to be a 1952 San Francisco. Roll number 78. 19 wheat cents now. And that's a 1950 Philadelphia. Roll number 79 is going to give us a foreign coin. And it's not from Canada this time. I believe this is a Bahamian one cent with the starfish on it. Let's flip it around. And it is Commonwealth of the Bahamas. 1995, and I didn't point it out earlier, but we also grabbed our second Canadian, a 1959 Laureate Portrait or Young Head right there. We'll take that as well. All right, got some pretty good finds on the board. Almost to 20 wheat cents, 21 rolls still left. We're on roll number 90, and box number two has been a slow box. But we finally found our fifth wheat cent of the box after the 40th roll. And it'll make 20 now for the hunt. We're averaging 10 per box, not too bad. It's just a beat up 1944 Philly. But like I said, it's nice to see 20 wheat cents now in two boxes. And we still have 10 bonus rolls to go. All right, we finished that second box. And you know what? It's kind of unfortunate, but we're also lucky. We're unfortunate because this box was light on copper. It was light on fines, only five wheat cents in it. But we did get lucky though, because that five wheat cents plus the 15 from box one gave us 20. A lot of common stuff up here, but we have a nice 1911 P, a nice 1930 Denver, a 35 P, and a 35 Denver. This one being a little bit better of a date, and four coins before 1940 makes me happy, although all were from box number one. You already saw the 09s. We didn't get a full set of P and Ds, but I'll add those to my nice 09 coins. 
And then over here, we had four foreigns, three Canadians. One was that 1959 Laureate portrait and the Commonwealth of the Bahamas from 1995. 16 1959 coins. I don't see that many in a two-box hunt. We had, I believe, nine in box one and seven in box two, so a lot more than normal. I've been pulling those out of circulation for the last seven years. Weird to see that many in my area. We got a bunch of bright and shiny, seven of them. I think you guys already saw all of them. We might have added a couple more to the list here, but either way, these will go in my nice copper set rolls because they're close to being uncirculated, got good luster, at least red to red-brown. We ended up with one more 1969S, total of five for the two boxes, no DDOs. Speaking of copper, I made mention at the end of box one that if we had a light copper box, I would still expect to get about six pounds based on what my average is. Unfortunately, only five pounds, 13 ounces, which means box number two only had two pounds and one ounce, and that's a lot less. I usually get about two and a half pounds per box. Either way, it's a good amount of finds overall for a two box hunt. Now what I need to do is take my album, compare the finds to it, see if we have any upgrades or additions. Let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be back with a look at the books and some final thoughts on this two-box hunt. All right, we have finished comparing all of today's finds to the albums, and of course, no upgrades, no additions. The 1911 has a little corrosion on it in my book, but it has better detail. I tried to make a case for the 1930 Denver. I could not. I tried to make a case for the 1935 and the 35D. No luck, no upgrades, no additions. Even the bright and shinies couldn't update any of these red scents back here. So everything stays the same. And of course, with only a handful of Canadian small scents, nothing was able to be used in the books of those either. So 326 penny boxes searched, stuck at 210 out of the 234. And for the Canadian small scents out of 140 boxes worth of fines, stuck at 80 out of the 115. Hopefully, despite that second box being kind of tough and not having anything exciting in this hunt, you guys still found it fun and entertaining. If you did, I certainly would appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.